Thank you. Hey guys, it's Meme and my trusty <coughs> sidekick. Oh, Vinny's here. Who's struggling a little bit? He is. He can't get signed Sorry. in. Sorry. If he's not answering questions right away, it's because he can't get signed in. So I'll try to watch, which is really bad because today's Q and A day. By the way, Vinny Boo. Mm. <laughs> but it's okay. Here's what I did. You guys probably have noticed we have a lot of new um, subscribers, so we have a lot of new viewers, which is awesome because it really keeps me on my toes, right? Well, we've had a lot of new questions, and for some of you OGs, for some of you been here a long time crafters, you're going to know these answers, and that's fine. But what I want you to do, I've got seven questions here I want to answer real quick. Um, but if you have a question that you would like answered, and we will try to get to it in today's live show, what I need you to do is type in capital letters the word question and then your question out. And then Tam between Tamitha and Vince, we'll be able to see uh, what your questions are. So these are good questions to me, so I'm going to start with them because I want you to remember something. I see this a lot whenever people are doing like gadget video reviews and stuff like that. I've already got something on my mat. Um, one of the things I say is don't forget that some of these gadgets are for people with disabilities. Well, listen, don't forget some of these questions I'm answering today are for people who have never card made before or are brand new to this and they want to know the answers. And some of this will benefit you guys too. So good morning. Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting us go a day late. We got a lot done yesterday. I would also like to preface by saying this. If you have placed an order from us since last Wednesday and it looks as though it hasn't been fulfilled, this is not the case. Our software, they say I did it. They say it's my fault. <laughs> but our software has stopped marking them fulfilled when we are filling, when we're fulfilling the orders. We are not that behind, y'all. It's not that bad. But our software company is trying to fix that, and they're saying that they can get it fixed. But if it looks like your order hasn't been fulfilled, it has more than likely been fulfilled. Um, and the your tracking number is the issue. Like, a lot of people are calling Amber and asking where their order is, and they've already been delivered, but they don't know it. So if you are expecting an order, check in the places it normally comes to. It might already be there. So we're still shipping. It just looks like, it, like it's messed up. It is messed up on the software. They literally said I did it. I'm not even joking. They said I did it. So, I don't believe I did it. We're trying to get it fixed. All right, question number one. You can't get in? You're going to lock yourself out if you keep trying. Well, I tried to get in as you, but it's asking me for my facial ID, so I'm just going to punt that ID. Just use your phone. Well, I can't see comments on my phone. Why? Well, because I don't know, know how, Because I've done something and I can't. I'm sorry, y'all. Let, let me help him out here just a help second. Help the challenged. Let me help him out. Okay, okay. I got a red light on my microphone. Well, we have not been at these mics in a while. Which means I need to change batteries. Okay, where is the chat? I just want the chat. That's all I want. There it is. There you go, Ron. Okay, perfect. All right, so question number one is, what is a MISTI and how is it different from blocks? So we're going to jump into that. This is a MISTI. The most incredible stamping tool. Invented. Good try. Invented. Good try there, buddy. Hey, I was almost on the page. This is a MISTI. It is basically a stamp positioner. What it does is it allows you to put cardstock or put whatever you want to stamp on into the MISTI into one corner. Okay, so it gives you a specific spot. All right, and then you have these magnets to hold things down. Then you can take a stamp like this here teacup place it where you want it. So let's say I was using paper that I wanted this to be in a specific spot. I could lay it there and then pick it up. You pick it up with this side, okay, and then you ink it and stamp it. Now here's the other part. The other great thing about a MISTI is this. So I'm going to ink this up but be sloppy. So I'm not going to ink the whole thing. I just ink part of it. Now I'm going to make sure I have this in the far corner, okay, and then I'm going to stamp this. And you'll see I missed this whole part with the ink. You see that? This happens sometimes. We get to talking, that's my problem, <laughs> or we're in a hurry and we don't get things inked up all the way. Because this is a positioner that holds everything still, if we make sure our paper's in that far corner, we can come back and fix our mistake. See that? Nice, right? So we love that. It helps a lot if you're using different inks too, pigment versus dye. 
A lot of you guys already know the conundrum. Dye ink is water-based. It pulls on your stamps. Sometimes you need to stamp twice to get a good solid image. The Misty really helps with that. That is a nutshell explanation of that, okay? And the part two of that was how do they differ from block? How does the Misty differ from blocks? With a block, no matter how good I am, okay, I'm going to pick this up on a block, and we're going to do exactly what I did. We're going to do it by hand. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to stamp just like I normally would. And I want to show you the difference with a Misty. The other thing is if you have hand dexterity issues, if you're like me and you shake, that Misty makes life easy. Okay? And some people say it's expensive. It's worth every penny. There are some things in life that you should invest in. If you're a stamper, you should own a stamp positioner. You just should. Okay? Um, oh, I did not do what I said I was going to do. Hold on. I want to do the same mistake. So let's just wipe that ink off. I just wipe the ink off one end. All right, so we'll stamp it. So see how I missed this side, okay? I'm gonna ink it back up because I missed it and we're gonna try to do it. And I'm gonna try and I can get pretty close usually. Usually I can get pretty close. But I'm gonna try to fix it. Watch me fix it, perfect. You probably will. When I'm trying to prove, no, not at all, perfect. Okay, I tried. But look, you just can't get the same results. This was stamped twice, and it's perfect. This was stamped twice. I did get this handle, but this is double stamped. So that's why you need a Misty. And people will say to me, oh, well, I'm going to get the blocks, and then I'll get a Misty later. Well, here's the thing. If you're just starting stamping, if you can afford a Misty, get it, because it will change your stamping life. It'll, it'll make you enjoy it more, okay? All right, question number two. Oh, I don't want to go to two. I'm going to come back to that. Let's go to three because I'm already here. How do I clean my stamps if they are not sticking? I want to, I'm going to walk you through cleaning stamps because, not just the, the question here, but in our class we had recently, a lot of people were talking about stamp cleaning, so I want to talk to you about it. Now, I want to show you this. These are things that we use to clean with, okay? These are things that we use to clean with. There's a time and a place for all of them, and there's a way to use all of them. And that's what I want to talk about real quick. Let's start with wet wipes. Now, the only thing that I have learned that you need to be careful about with a wet wipe, you no, know, there's a couple things, but first thing I want you to be concerned about with wet wipes is you do not need the kind that have lanolin in them. You have to make sure they don't have lanolin. So you want to read the ingredients. And this one that has very few. This is something that um, Shannon found. I'm not recommending these, by the way, just because you see them. I'll explain that. But these are like Aqua Pure. They're 99% they're water, literally. Here's the thing about a wet wipe. They are full of lint. And the lint really doesn't appear on them until they start to dry out, which even makes it worse. And I want to show you, if I have to use a wet wipe, for example, we were in class recently. When I'm in class, I don't have a stamp scrubber for every student we get by with wet wipes, okay? So here's what I like to do. I make myself a little pad out of the wet wipe like this, okay? Just fold it up. This is not a perfect cleaning job. This is just a temporary job. So then you take your stamp and I like to just place it and kind of wiggle. And look, it's not getting much off. But you do not want to pick this wet wipe up and go to town. Here's why. The more you use this, the more friction you add, the more it dries, the more lint is going to get on your stamp. Lint does two things. Lint stops it from being sticky. Lint also gets in the way of your stamp. If you've ever had a linty stamp and you ink it up and stamp it, your image is going to be furry. Literally, it will be furry. <laughs> I wish I had one. I had some like that before. Um, so I don't recommend these unless you are in a tight. Okay, if you just need to get the, the wet ink off of it really quick and put them up, I don't recommend wet wipes. I've never, I just don't. Now, these are those lint-free cloths. Vince buys these in big old batches from Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. I like these. I would rather use these and squeaky clean than a, wet, than a wet wipe. This is better for the environment if you are concerned about that because uh, this guy gets used until I don't have a clean spot left. Literally, this will be a different color by the time I'm done with it. My preference in a hurry is this. Squeaky Clean, which is the greatest thing since shirt pockets, <laughs> the best cleaner I've ever found, okay? Squeaky Clean, leave your stamp on the block. Why? We want to protect the back of our stamp at all times. 
What causes them to get unsticky is touching them, using them, laying them down on the back of them. Never do that. Always keep the back of your stamp either on its packaging, either put it on the package and keep it there, or keep it on your block. Even when you're washing with soap and water, keep your stamp on your block, okay? This won't bring back the sticky. We'll get to that, but I'm telling you how to avoid having to bring back the sticky. All right, squirt of squeaky clean. Now I'm gonna tell you something, this is a nasty stamp. This guy ain't been cleaned in a while. See that? Okay. In a tight or in a hurry, this is how I like to do mine. I put the squeaky clean on it and I go to rubbing. And with this cloth, it does not bother me one bit because it is lint free. It is not going to deposit any lint. Now, <clears throat> look how much came off right there. There are a lot of companies that make those lint free cloths and you can purchase them. They call them stamp cleaners, like they're designed to clean your stamps. So if you want to get some of those, get that. I just get these because I think they're a good price. I want to see if I can get that out. There's something on my mat that's driving me insane. Now, I can tell that at some point in time, I have used stays on with this. Um, yeah, because that's pretty clean that time. I've used stays on with this stamp, so it is stained. I don't care. A stained stamp is a happy stamp. Okay. So, that's how I do them in a tight. Spray them with squeaky clean. Use my lint-free cloth, leaving it on the block. Okay. Another way you can do it. If I'm sitting at a table where I have space, my work surface here has no space. I am, it's like a cockpit, like everything's in my, in my reach. Yep. But when we're stamping, when we're making samples or something like that, we will sit this on the table. I love having this. This is the Nuvo um, cleaner scrubber pad, I think. Nuvo scrubber pad, not sure. Take my squeaky clean. One, two, three squirts, three squirts. Dirty stamp, mine's not dirty right now, but dirty stamp, okay? Rub it over here to clean it while it's wet. Rub it over here to dry it. See how I'm leaving it on? I have had people who work for me not know, and I've watched them, I'm gonna show you, never do this, but I'm gonna show you. I've seen them take the stamp in their hand off the block and do this with it. That's not how we clean. All this does is take all the oils from your finger and take sticky off of the back of this guy. That's all it does. And if you get squeaky clean back there, because squeaky clean's a very conditioning soap, it's just gonna make that come off quicker, right? Don't do that, okay? Leave it on a block to clean it. Dry it over here. If it's not perfectly dry, I do this, but y'all don't, because you're not supposed to. Do this, okay? All right, now let's say, let's use this one. Let's say the stickies come off the back. By the way, these are great. And you can take this to your sink with some soap and water and wash it if you ever need to. I don't do that. I just use it over and over again. It doesn't seem to deposit back or anything like that, so it's great. Now, pretend this is, this is not pretend, this is mild soap and water. See that? Pretend the sticky's off this stamp. Okay, the only time I, hold, I handle a stamp like this is when the stickies come off. And I take it to my sink. I squirt a tiny bit. I use hand soap. Some people use dish soap. Some people use, it's a mild soap. I feel like if soap is good enough for my hands, it's good enough for my stamps. It's mild, right? So I take this. This is literally hand soap from my sink. Oh, it is not warm. <laughs> That's kind of gross. And I would put this in there. Don't soak them. There's no need to soak them or anything. I just don't have a faucet that I can film for you guys. So I'm just washing this really well. And here's the thing. In, a, in my normal setup at my sink, Okay, I will have like a dish drainer. You know what dish drainers are? Do anybody remember those? <laughs> Look, Buck's like, don't drink that. Oh no. I would take this dripping wet, okay, from the cleaner, from being rinsed, rinse it in some um, clean water too. And then I would lay it flat side up on my dish drainer. See how wet it is? And I would leave it alone and let it dry. The nemesis of stamps are paper towels never pat them with a paper towel. It won't work. You can pat them all you want. All that lint's getting on them. That's your nemesis. Take this and let it dry. The air will bring the sticky back. This one's already stickier on the edge than it was. I can already feel it where it's dried. The air will bring it back. I, I won't even t use this to dry it. I won't even use this lint-free cloth. I'm just using that to catch the water that was dripping off of me. I would take this to my dish drainer and lay them out. I've seen people lay them onto paper towels to do it. Don't do it. Do not... Paper towels, it's like gremlins. Do not get paper towels near these. 
<laughs> don't do it because all that lint gets on them and you end up with fuzzy images. How many of you had a fuzzy image before? Raise your hand. All right, so I'm gonna sit that right there. It'll dry, put it on some plastic. I'm gonna move this so I don't drink it. Sit this behind you, please. Um, that is how I clean my stamps. For the most part, my stamps don't go to the sink. I mostly clean them with my squeaky clean and a lint-free cloth. All right. That was answer to question number three, but we skipped number two. I'll go back to it. <coughs> Let's talk number two. Number two is about cardstock weight. This person is new to um, card making from the way this is worded. It says, what's a good weight for card bases and what's the difference of the weights? Now, part one is me just going, here's the one you want. But part two says, what's the difference? Okay, I know, I'm aware that you guys don't like making decisions. I don't mean that in a bad way. That sometimes sounds bad. I don't mean that in a bad way. My viewers, for the most part, tell me, I'm just gonna do what you do. I'm flattered by that. I think that is so cool that you guys trust me like that. And for the most part, even in class, you go, if you tell me to do it, I'm doing that, okay? But here's the thing about card making that I think is important. I messed your camera up, but I don't think anybody can tell. We got a super chat, by the oh. way, from Kim Keith. Keith. Thank you, Kim. <sighs> Thank you so much. Cardstock is a preference where bases are concerned, okay? Here's where it gets confusing when you're new to card making. I remember this. I remember this so bad. I would walk in the big box store, okay? And they would have this wall of beautiful papers and paper packs and all this stuff. And in my mind, I would be like, what of this do I need for card making? Not scrapbooking. I understood scrapbooking pretty good, but what do I need for card making? And I was like, when I get a card, it's never made of paper. But it always has these pretty designs on it. How do you put that together? The trick is your card base, okay? I am a person who likes a thick card base. I like a card to feel substantial in my hand. But that can happen in multiple ways. So I'm gonna show you these card bases and then I'm gonna show you which one's my favorite, okay? All right, let's start with, I'm, I've got some pieces here that I wanna show you the differences of. Okay, let me see how I've got them lined up. Let's do it like this. All right, this cardstock right here, I better, I better not start there. Let's start here. This one is PA 110 pound cardstock. It is not cover stock. There's a difference, okay? Where does poundage come from? Okay, listen. Cardstock is not made like this. It is not made in eight and a half by 11. It's not made in 12 by 12. It's made in massive sheets that are cut down and the poundage comes from its original massive sheet. Like it's something about how many sheets it, how many sheets, like this is not right. You can Google it, but let's say you take 10 sheets and you weigh them, that's the poundage or something or one sheet, whatever. So it's ever how many sheets put together weighs this pound that tells you what pound this cardstock is. Google it, it's interesting. Okay. This is 110 pound cardstock, but it is not cover stock. So I want you to hear this and see this. Okay. This is 110 pound um, Nina. What's it called? Classic Crest cover stock. Hear the difference? It's kind of got a little base tone to it. Did you hear that? Like it's a, a thicker, thicker product. It's a thicker product. It's a cover stock. So even though these are both 110 pound, one is a cover stock. Now, I'll answer your question in a second because a lot of you just like, tell me which one to use. Just hold on. Can I answer one in the mm -hmm. middle? Um, <laughs> it's all about that base, Tim. Natalie, we do have that paper on order and it is somewhere between there and here. They've even emailed me and asked me, has it come in yet? Because they're still showing it in delivery so it should already be here but it has not made it yet but it should be in soon more mente this one is called not your mama's okay this is by brutus monroe it's 130 pound it is thick it listen to that base it can even feel a lot of times like a very lightweight chipboard okay there was a time when i would tell you if you could afford it to use this for your card base I don't feel that way anymore. I don't use this for card bases. There's a place for it. 
It's great in mini albums if you want to make pockets, like mini album pockets, not for pages. It's a little thick depending on how you're going to bind your mini album. But like to make a pocket out of it, it's super sturdy and strong. Um, if you're doing like, if you're doing like a brag book and you want a thick cover, this is a good thick cover for like a, a paper brag book or something like that. I have sort of changed my opinion on it. Couple reasons. Number one, this is a luxury cardstock. Like, this is not a cardstock you buy and mass produce for Christmas. It's not that kind of cardstock. I want to say this. I don't know prices, but we'll put links for you guys. But it's, it is a luxury cardstock. Okay. Let's be honest. Nina is a luxury cardstock. Now, there was a time when I would buy the Nina and use it for my mass production cards. The reason for that is I love the weight. I love the way it works and I didn't have an option. Okay. And this is the one I would use for my luxury cards. I still say, y'all gonna be like, what? I still think everybody should have a ream of Nina in their in their collection. It's a beautiful, beautiful cardstock. And if there's ever a time that you want to, especially if you're wanting to make like an embossed tone on tone card, you know how the white cards with the embossed layers, this is beautiful for embossing. Like it's the perfect thickness to get, especially if you have those 3D embossing folders that are really deep. This is a great one for that. Okay? I can remember when that was the only thing you wanted. I mean, it just. It was. When okay. we couldn't find it for a period of time, I just thought you were going to just go over the edge. But it's luxury. It's expensive. It's the one you put on your shelf and you say, I'm going to use this for when I'm doing my white tone on tone work, when I'm doing my embossing work. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those beautiful cards, like wedding invitations. This is, this is. To me, that kind of luxury. How is how would I say it? Like this is like lace, satin. It's like that. You're gonna use it, but there's a time for it, right? This is your everyday workhorse. You got a buddy that just bought a new house, you wanna make them a welcome home card? This is your workhorse. This is the one you do for that, okay? A wedding invitation is gonna get saved and put in a scrapbook. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna get put on a window seal until it's done and probably put in the trash. That's okay, do not freak out about that. It's okay, that's what cards are for, okay? Tamma the pointed this out. Nina is great for alcohol marker coloring and well, I don't know about alcohol. It's okay for alcohol, but it's really good for color pencil because it's so smooth. But we're not talking that, we're talking card bases. If I talk all that, we can be diluted and talk forever, okay? And we, if you wanna know about that, let me know. Bug, this is a make a fuss card base. It's one that you really are. This right here is a for real make a fuss. You, if you're only inviting one person to your wedding, use not your mama's. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's the one. All right. This one is alabaster cardstock. And I wanna say that this is a hundred, it's not on here. And I wanna say it's a hundred pound, but it might not be a hundred pound. It's really beautiful, it's really thick. And in my opinion, and some of you guys might agree, I can mix this one up with Not Your Mama's if I take them out of the package. That's why my alabaster stays in its package, because I can mix it up. They're very different. Like, they're very different. Oh yeah, I felt them. But you can mix it up if you're not holding them in your hand. You can yeah. get them confused, okay? This one is lighter weight, but it's they're so beautiful I can mix them mix them up. This product, because I only get like 25 sheets in a pack, this is a white product I would use for top layers and not card bases. You don't get as much in a pack, but I would use this where I'm wanting to do like top layer work, die cutting work, things like that, okay? Then you have these guys. I am gonna make a recommendation for my favorite in a second. I am gonna make, oh, so it's 110 pound. Alabaster's 110 pound, they looked it up. Then you have these guys, okay? In my opinion, if you are a beginner card maker, okay? And what I mean by that is, if you have never sat down and mass produced a bunch of cards, if you are just dipping your toe these are where I would start. And I think all my crafty friends would agree with this. Somebody probably should have told you this in the beginning, you know? How much cardstock did we buy thinking we could use it only find out it wasn't the right one? This is where I'd start as a beginner. Cause look, this gives you 50 cards to practice on. Now this is 65 pound. Don't let that scare you. Cause I've been showing you these rich 110, 100 pound cardstocks, right? As a beginner, 
you won't hate this product. This is a perfectly good card base, okay? And it gets thicker as you add to it. Images, shapes, designs, etc. paper, yada, yada. But if I were beginning today and somebody said to me, just get one of these, that would make me so happy because no one said that to me. I thought I needed all this card stock and every poundage of blah, blah. This works great for card bases. Not only do I get bases, I get envelopes. While we're here, I'll talk about envelopes for a second. Y'all gonna get mad at me. You can get mad at me. This is, this is May May's opinion today. I don't believe in making envelopes. There, I said it. There is one place I will make an envelope. One place. Two places. There's two places. Place number one is when I make a card that needs a specialty envelope, I will make an envelope for it. Meaning if I need an envelope that's gusseted, that's kind of thick, if I need an envelope to match for some reason. Um, now this is not a popular opinion because people are going to be mad at me about it. It's not a popular opinion. People love making their own envelopes. I am not that person. Okay. So I buy my envelopes. These kits make me super happy. Okay. Cause it's ready to go. The second place I'll make envelopes is if I'm making an envelope mini album and typically I don't do it there, but if I'm making an envelope mini album and I want my envelopes to have pay, have pattern on them, I will make them then. But for the most part, you're going to see me use ready-made envelopes for that too. Cause I just don't believe in that in making the, the boring part. I don't believe in it. This envelope's going to get ripped open. Even if you decorate it, it's going to get ripped open. I'm not spending time. And I also have never been very happy with using paper for envelopes. People tell me all the time, use copy paper. It works great. I don't like copy paper envelopes. I feel like they're flimsy. People tell me use designer paper. I don't want to waste my designer paper on an envelope. My opinion may not be popular. These guys for beginners are the way to go. Also, another thing, listen to this beginners and seasoned folks, okay? You may not know the size card maker you are. I'm an A2 card maker predominantly, okay? But I feel like that's because I came into card making when that was the card making size that was so popular. But I know people who are five by seven card makers. My friend Terrence, he's a five by seven card maker and that is his canvas. So he would want to get a five by seven set or what have you. You might want to be a four bar card maker. You might want to be a mini slim line. You might want to be a full size slim line. You won't know until you have that, okay? So this is a good way for you to go. This is an A2 set. So this is a good way for you to go, do I like making A2 cards? Would I need a bigger canvas? Would I need a smaller canvas? Think about that too. Okay. Angeli Lopez has a question that is not craft related. Okay, hold on one second then. Let me finish this whole thing. It's real important. I'll cut you hold on to it. This is luxury card bases and envelopes. It's a hundred pound, it's more expensive, it's luxury. You don't have to have the 65 pound workhorses like I just showed you. If you want a richer card base with envelopes, this is nice. Even the envelopes are more luxury. Can you see how that envelope is? So when you see this is more expensive in my store and you're like, well, I'll just get that other one. That's fine, but this is more luxury. You're gonna get a thicker, higher quality cover stock of card stock with a richer, more expensive looking envelope even, okay? But I still would put these in my stash. This is me, I like these things. All right, ask me that question. Ansley is in Callaway Gardens. Oh my gosh. And Ansley wants to know what antique shop she should go to. Oh, Ansley. Okay, are you in Callaway or Chipley or Warm Springs? Because it matters. If you're in Callaway, I need you to get on that main drag in front of Callaway and turn to the left. <laughs> And drive, Come out, turn left. And drive till you see Chipley. Okay, you'll see it. You won't miss it. The town of Chipley. The whole right-hand side, you want to go in every one of those stores. Trust me, go in every one of those stores. Across the street is one called, oh, I'm never going to remember it. It's on the left side. If you're coming down the street, it's on the left side, across the street. If you're coming from Callaway, it'll be on the left side, not the right side. Oh. Yes. I'm afraid you're not right. If you're coming from Callaway into Chipley, all the stores are on the left, except for the one across the street where we bought the radio that's on the right. That's what I said. The stores on the left, you need to do every one of them. No, you said right, but it's okay. The stores on the left, do every one of those. Across the street on the far corner is a big antique store. Um, you won't miss it, do it. Then you need to take the 16 mile drive to Warm Springs and do all those shops. Okay, there you go. She's at the Lodge and Spa. Give me a break. Why are you living my life, Ansley? That's where I want to be right now. <laughs> All right. Next question. Actually, let me say this. Did that 
cause any questions? I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. Timothy, did you see that cause any conversation or did you see anything that I need to? Some folks agree with you. Some folks said they love making cards. One person said they made all of their Christmas envelopes last year. Not again. You couldn't even tell me I was going to do that. I would lose my mind. That's like gift wrapping. I don't enjoy, I do enjoy gift wrapping, but not enough to gift wrap. Trent, your package arrived early yesterday. I'm going to show not it. not make it today. I'm going to show yesterday. it. I'm going to show it. And we had some fun with it. Um, pictures, all of them. Okay. I can only make envelopes on the card of extra special envelopes. Amen. Amen. Most people agree with me. Part of the problem is you guys have kind of, have kind of been on my channel and you kind of see how I do things. And listen, my opinion is not always the popular opinion because there's a lot of channels that are much larger channels than me that have completely different opinions. And I encourage you to make your own opinion, opinion in crafting. I'm just telling you how I feel about things. All right. Audrey says, what Nina cardstock do I use? The only Nina I keep in my collection is the 110-pound Classic Crest Solar White. That's the only on the one. Back? Oh, we have it in the store. Let me show you what it looks like. Oh, listen, it's luxury. When I say it's luxury, that means it ain't cheap. This is the one that I love. Solar White. It's beautiful. It, this is like jewelry. <laughs> That's what I think of it like, like gold. Now, I don't hoard it. Y'all need to know something about me. I'm not a hoarder of stuff. If I want to use it, I'll pick it up and use it. But it does have its place. Angie oh, says this wait. is her fifth wedding anniversary present. How cool, Ansley. Now listen, if you're a card maker and you don't go right now and order this from my store, there's something wrong, okay? How much is this guy? It's real cheap. This I is wanna say it's less than $9. I wanna say it's $9.99 or $8.99. This is the PA that I showed you that is 110 pound. This has become the one I go to. This has become my card base go to because I get 150 sheets for how I'm much? pretty sure it's $8.99, but I'm I not think it's $8 .99. 100% positive. 150 sheets of this. If you don't own this, <laughs> if you're a card maker and have not got this yet, there's something wrong. I literally have had people come in my store and they're walking around with the Nina. I, this is who I am. Y'all need to know this. And anybody will tell you this to come in my store. And I'll go, why are you picking that up today? And if they don't tell me I have some special stuff I want to do or blah, 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 I go, okay, let me save you some money. Buy four of these for card making. It's $8.99 for 150 sheets of 110 pound cardstock. When I saw this on their website, I ordered like every single one I could get and we keep it in all the time. As long as I can keep them, I'm going to. Okay, Terry wants you to explain awesome. the difference in cardstock and cover stock. Okay, Other it's than thickness. Other it's just thicker. Thickness, that's what it is. Thickness. Cover stock is as if you were making a book cover. I mean, it's not, it kind of does have to do with that, but not exactly, but it's more of that, okay? Um, you guys tell them if you have this, how much of a bargain this is. Yeah, eight ninety nine. Run, Tim, the don't walk. The link. This is okay. First off, let me tell y'all something. I know you're like, well, I just use Georgia Pacific, which is not Georgia Pacific anymore. They changed it. It's not the same cardstock, and it's not as good as it used to be. This one is good. This will even run through my printer. And it's probably fixing to be sold out. So. Mm, it should be. We should never have it on the shelf. Honestly. Yeah. Christmas is coming up. You're fixing to do all your as many as cards. That right there should never, you should never have your craft room without that if you're a card maker. That's, you know, trust me or don't. Um, <laughs> that's going to be on a t-shirt. Trust me or don't. That's who I am. Uh, Jennifer says she needs a tutorial on how to get a download that she bought on Etsy onto her iPhone or into her Cricut Joy. She's technically challenged. That is, that's a whole different video. That's a whole video in itself. Okay. I need to go back and do question number two. No, that was question number two. We've done three questions. Question number yeah, four. you're at 36 minutes. I knew I'd go over. I knew I would. Question number four. Let me grab this. And I think Tamitha had another question. I saw somebody write question earlier. Okay. This question is, what chipboard weight should I use for album? I'm going to throw y'all a curveball. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, babe. Yes, dear. Is there any chance you could grab that album for me? Well, yeah. You don't have to get it right yet, but if you don't mind, you don't have to undo. It's wireless. I just had towed it. Okay, this is the chipboard I like to use for albums. I do not know 
the millimeters or anything. This is like a sixteenth of an inch thick. This is what we carry in our store, okay? It comes in white, craft, and black. It is 25 sheets to a pack. It's worth, this is one of those, if you're an album maker, you just need to have it. Now, I think it is called medium weight in our store, but I think that's what the manufacturer calls it. If you compare it to like Graphic 45 medium weight, it's not the same. This is like a mat board. It's curved because I had it sitting on my desk like that, and it will do that because it's chipboard. This is like a mat board, almost like a photo mat board, but this stuff is thick, okay? To cut it, I have to cut the front with my trimmer and flip it over and cut the back because it's that thick. This is what you want for chipboards, I mean for albums. But I'm fixing to throw, <laughs> I'm fixing to throw a loop at you. Um, I don't think I have any Graphic 45 to show them the difference. This doesn't even have a brand name. I found this product, okay? I went crazy over it. I have probably sold more of this than, we probably sold more of this chipboard than we have cardstock. That's probably true. We, we, can, we sell this all the time, okay? Here's the thing about it. I don't know how to tell you this is the one you want because I found this one and it's the one you want. I don't know. It doesn't have a name. No. It doesn't really have a weight. It's from Graphics. Yeah, it's it's from the company G-R-A-F-F-I-X. Yes, Graphics. And it's fantastic. And I don't know how to lead you to it except give you links. Or And we'll, Tamitha, if you would come back and put all these links in the description. It's fantastic. Three different colors. You won't be sad. This is one you should always keep, just like that $9 stuff. But listen, at our Craft Acropolis, everybody agree with me about this. And again, my opinion, ready for this? You, as long as 49th and Market makes these, you will probably never see me assemble a chipboard album again. I... I have never enjoyed doing that. I've never enjoyed building the spine. I've never enjoyed doing the chipboard part. I've never enjoyed, I've done it because that's what we had to do. But now that 49th and Market makes these, it's not happening for me. And the thing is this, my mini album brain is going like crazy. And here's why. Because now I can get this and just do the fun part. Like they're just for the fun part. 49th the market needs to talk to me because I will tell you I want to be a testimonial for them like this is lit look how many times I say the greatest thing since shirt pockets this is the greatest thing since dress pockets and y'all know skirt and dress pockets y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about you got a dress with pockets in it or better yet you got a shirt with pop like a tunic with pockets that's this let me show you this. You've seen me put one of these together on the channel. And let me tell you what it allowed me to do. I need you to hear what I'm saying, okay? I, on that album, I put in so many die cuts that I have been wanting to play with. But the reason I don't normally play with them is because by the time I build the album, I'm so sick of the album that I just want to get paper in it and move on. You may not feel this way. This is my opinion, okay? I don't enjoy the assembly of the album. There are people who do. At Craft Acropolis, I had some students tell me, I enjoy the process. Then Tim you're Dixon who enjoys it's for. the process too. Then you're who it's for, okay? For those of you like me that, okay, so on my channel, I have one video of a mini album that is 11 parts. I think I have one even longer than that. But I, I could do a full blown out album with these and start at the fun part. I literally want to do a live show putting one of these together to show y'all how easy it is. Now, it won't be a 30-minute show. There's no way I can do it in 30 minutes. But I would love to start from my pieces are cut and put them in there, okay? Look at this. I, hope, I, I don't know how they knew, but they knew. Do you see the size of the gap between the pages? It's fantastic. We can get thick. We can put lots of stuff in there. We can add lots of stuff, which they even make that for us too. I don't have that in here to show. I need that to show them. Look, look at this beautiful, smooth, black chipboard. Look, no more covering. No more doing all that covering work. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Look at these pages. Look at the real estate. 
and you can cut this down. You can add pockets. 49th and Market has even come out with like um, waterfalls, pre-made waterfalls that you glue in, pre-made pockets, pre-made flap. They have this little flappy thing that goes like, I may be able to show you in the after show because I think it's a new product we got in. I, I'm like, where have you been all my life? It literally changes the game for me. It literally does. You get three pages, which is gracious plenty for me because, listen, you're thinking that's not enough. Well, listen, when I design an album for you, I typically do five pages. One, two, three, four, five. That's typically what I do. Six at the most because they get too heavy. If you saw Lisa's album she did at Craft Acropolis and is also doing online at our online event, she started with this. That album was incredible. And... <laughs> How, I mean, come on. Look, you can even, if you don't like these square edges, use your corner around and round them off. You can change, you can edit this in so many ways. A super chat, Terry, is a, like a tip for the uh, creator. You also can join or subscribe, no, it's not subscribe. What is it when they get the $4.99 membership? Become a member. You become a member, that's $4.99 a month. It's another way to support the channel. Okay, listen, the other thing about this, so this guy's $11.99. Now, before you go, oh, $11.99, listen to me. You don't have to buy chipboard. You don't have to buy sticky tape. You don't have to follow a tutorial. You don't have to print out instructions. You don't have to watch a video. <laughs> you just get to do the fun part. If you've got kids that ever wanted to make an album, you don't have to do any of that hard work. There's no measuring. And for $11.99, if you said to me, for $11.99, you would never have to make a binding for your album again, 100%. I'm in. I hate binding albums. There's never one everybody understands. There's never one that's completely sturdy that stays together. I'm going to stop because I sound like QVC. But I'm serious. 49th and Market, it's not 49th and Market. I do it every time, y'all correct me, it's 49 in market, 49 in market. They rocked it, black, white, I want these in craft, hadn't seen that as an option yet, I want these in craft, I know no, it's they coming. They make the insides in craft. That's why I know it's coming. But they don't have the outsides in craft. We have these in store in black and white, um, and the inserts I'll show you in the after show. All right, that was chipboard question, why? That's me from now on, you're gonna get mad too, because that's what you're gonna see. I got, I got so many things planned for that, Okay, question number five. When should I use wet glue versus tapes? Okay, this is one that I wish there was a cut and dry for. The, the one place you definitely should always use wet glue is when making pockets, but not necessarily gusseted pockets, okay? If you're making a pocket and you're just going to take a piece of cardstock and put glue here, 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 flip it over, stick it down, and it becomes a pocket, you need to use wet glue. The reason is wet glue dries. Sticky tape does not. So when you go to stick something in here, inevitably it's going to get stuck in the sides as you're pushing it down because that tape is still sort of exposed. So if you're making three-sided pockets without a gusset, always use wet glue. Okay. Ainsley has a question about Chipley again. Okay. Let's see if I can find it again. She says. She's trying to rub it in. Is Chipley the <laughs> Chipping Village Shopping Center and Chipley and Maine? There I should, think so. There should be a store there called. Um, oh, and the other one is called Sweet Home Antiques. I don't. I don't know. The, there should be a store there called Chantilly. No, Chanticleer. Chanticleer, Chanticleer, Chanticleer. That's, you'll see it if you find that. If you find Chanticleer, Chanticleer. Remember the one I'm talking about? I don't. Oh, it's my favorite store. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you all what a gusseted pocket is in case you're like, May May, what's a gusset, gusseted pocket? Okay. We'll just make one really quick. This is a gusseted pocket. I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know for sure. All right, so I have scored half an inch all the way around. I have miter cut, I'm going to fold this in, fold this up, fold this in. This is what I call a gusseted pocket, where you're going to glue these flaps down. And the reason you would make a gusseted pocket is number one, if you don't have stick, if you don't have wet glue that you like, or if you want a little gap in your pocket, a little more space in your pocket. 
for this, you can totally use sticky tape because nothing is ever going to get stuck sliding in and out of here because it's going to slide. Well, this is too big of a piece. Hold on. It's going to slide inside the gusset so it won't get stuck. So that's where you can use sticky tape in pockets. That's why it says one of two places. In the rest of the album, for me, when I'm trying to build super stability, like if I'm doing a binding, I like to use a really strong sticky tape for that. I love to use, when I'm making composition books, I love to use full sheet of sticky to cover the front cover and the back cover of my composition books because then I know my image is stuck all the way down to the edges. If you've ever done a composition book with me, you know what I'm talking about. That's it. Chanticleer. That, you want to go to that whole strip mall. Ch is that Chanticleer? The whole strip mall. Um, let's see. So that's that question, I think. Question six, and some of y'all be like, you're just trying to, you're just trying to talk about this. It's not true because I never do, so I better do it. Question six is, what is the Stamp Clubs? Okay. Our she new never talks about I it. never talk about I it. I beg her to. Twice a month I talk about it. Our new viewers are seeing our reveals and they don't know what's going on. So I'm going to tell you what it is, okay? For the past, uh, what are we, six years in? Five, Be six close. years in? We, I, every month, myself and my graphic designer, Sylvia, and Shannon now, Shannon's in on this too, we design a new stamp set, one for our original club and one for our second club. Our second club is our scripture club. And the reason it's second is because it came along second, and it's also the second in the month. Our original club is a four by six stamp set, okay, full size stamp set, new every month. It's a mystery. You never know what you're getting. But in our original club, I make sure it's one everybody can use. It's not one, it's never going to be Christmas. It's never going to be Valentine's Day. Now, that doesn't mean it won't be winter or love, but it's not going to be specifically Valentine's Day, specifically Easter, specifically Christmas. That also doesn't mean that it might not say Happy Easter or Happy Christmas somewhere because if everyone can use that, but it will never be the focal point. I'll never make a holiday the focal point of a club set, okay? That's why we release Christmas in like July. We release a lot of Christmas. So here's the kicker about the club. They're $11.99. Our regular stamp set, that same size, sells for $12.99. The club is $11.99 and you pay no shipping. You literally are charged $11.99 on the first of every month if you're in the original club. And if you're in the scripture club, you're charged on the 15th of the month, $11.99. Now, if you're international, meaning you're outside of the U.S., you're charged $13.49 and that includes your shipping. You also, as a club member, get a 15% discount every day in our store unless it's an item we can't discount every day. And at this point, I want to say it's like two things, the Misties and clubs, future clubs. You can't use your discount on a club sign up. You, they're regular price because they're already discounted so low. Um, and you can start and stop anytime. Like if you're like, you know, I want to do the club for Christmas. Or if you want to give it as a gift, you can pay a year in advance. You can um, like get it for three months to do it as a gift. You can get it for yourself. So I'll try it till Easter, whatever, and see what it's like. Um, I think it's super fun and I think it's worth it because I think we we really try to give you workhorse stamps. I get it. 12 stamps a year is a lot of stamps, right? But I try to give you stamps that you go to all the time. St not, not kitschy stuff. Now, I do have some kitschy stuff coming. I'll be honest with y'all. I really have some fun stuff coming. <laughs> I think I have a super fun one coming. But, um, but even at that, it's something you can use all the time. Everybody will like it. That's what I try to do. Um, Love the Stamp Club. Would love to have you guys join it. Here's how you can get all the information about the Stamp Club. When you click on it in our store, the first page is all the questions answered. Listen, we've been doing this so long that every question that could possibly come up has been answered in that product page. So if you'll just take the time to read through that, you'll know it. Look how many people say they love it. We love having you in the club. And, and that's true. Tamitha says it's a great way to build up a diverse stamp stash. And like I said, we have original or scripture. You choose which one you want to be in. Um, you can be in both. We have a lot of people who are in both. Um, so that's question six. Number seven. Oh, so Tamitha said, I get this one a lot. It's not a craft question, but I want us to discuss it. It is, how do I use loyalty points? Speaking of stamp clubs, do y'all know you get loyalty points every month when you buy a stamp? 
Like, do they know that? Have I ever said that? Like, when you sign up for Stamp Club, you get points for the 11, actually you get points for $12. I think it's, it's either 11 or 12. You get points every time you're billed, you get more points. So here's what loyalty points are. In our store, for every dollar you spend, you get one loyalty point. Those loyalty points add up and can get you coupons and discounts. The way you use them is when you open the website, okay, at the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little thing that says loyalty points. You click on that. If you have any available, it will show you how to use them. And if there's any you can earn, like share us on Facebook, share us on Instagram, da da da, da sign up, whatever. If you, you do any of those things. Well. You don't do that one no more? No, you actually, for us, <laughs> on your birthday, you get a $5 coupon. That's just a thing. When you sign up and put your birthday in, you get a $5 coupon. Like, that's been a thing for a while. So. You get 12 points for the stamp set. I thought so, but I wasn't sure. So every club, every month, you're getting 12 points just like this, even if you haven't bought anything else. And then you earn those coupons. The more you spend, the more you earn, and you cash them in and you spend them. Now, let me tell you this. I would not cash them in every time you get an email about it. That email is telling you, hey, you've earned $5 or you've earned $10. But if you bank them, you can earn like, I think it's $20. $50, $75, $100, I think you can bank and earn more. Mm -hmm. So that's how that works. That's loyalty points. All right, Tamitha, I know early on I saw a question. Yes, you get points every month for your club. Oh, how sweet, Tanya. Make space in your craft, your craft room. You're going to love both clubs. Sometimes, a lot, and y'all need to know this because you need to go ahead and sign up. Sometimes, like around Black Friday and stuff like that, Vince will do double loyalty points. Sometimes he'll do that, like for the day or for so many hours where whatever you spend, you get double loyalty points on. That's awesome. So sometimes he'll do it where you get two for every dollar spent, and it gets you to your coupon quicker. Oh, so, okay. So you get 50 loyalty points on your birthday, plus you get a $5. Um, is the $5 for everybody or is the $5 for stamp club members? I don't remember that one, y'all. I'm sorry. That one was set up a long time ago. I'm not sure how that works, but 50 loyalty points is as if you spent 50 bucks just because you had a birthday. Thanks, Loretta. What does that mean? The more points you earn, the less they're worth. I don't even know what that means, Connie. They don't, their worth doesn't change. They're always worth what they, like you earn bigger coupons the more you have. Okay. Oh, she saved $60. Can you use more than one loyalty coupon code? You can, but the only way at this point you can do that is to call in to place your order. Not a problem. You call in and place it with us, and then Amber can do it. Anybody who answers the phone can do it by hand. But there's nowhere on our system yet, which I do not, it blows my mind how they don't. Ugh, it blows my mind. The more, um, they don't let us have two. There was an app for a while that would do it for us, but then they quit doing it and told us they never did it. That was my favorite. When they, when they go, we've never done that. We used you only for that feature, and now you're telling me you don't do it. Yeah. So. We're working on fixing that. We have got lots of feelers out there. But if you'll just call us, Amber will place the order for you. I say Amber, whoever answers the phone, and she'll do that for you. <laughs> the points do not expire. Somebody yeah, they don't. Ask that. No, no. All right. That is a lot. I did, I did not see another question. Thanks, Trent. You guys are so sweet. I do not see another question. I thought there was a question early. Oh, there it is. Question was, can you sharpen craft scissors? I don't personally sharpen my craft scissors. People say, I can hardly say this without making my mouth hurt. Listen, people say you can, <laughs> you want to say it? People say you can cut aluminum foil with it. <laughs> I literally cannot even say it. People say you can, um, like you would with a punch. You know how people say you can sharpen punches by Y'all, it makes my mouth draw up. Something about the thought, you know I can't do metal mm -hmm. on teeth or anything like that, and it kind of gets me. You know how Josh is with napkins and he can't be around you if you're squishing napkins or putting them on your mouth? So people say if you do that. But here's, if you need them sharpened, well, first off, let me say this. I've never sharpened any of my, like, cutter bees. I've never sharpened any of my, I've never sharpened any of my crafting scissors. Never. Um, now, I'm an ex-hairdresser. So I did have all those sharpened. Probably every three months I'd have my hairdressing scissors sharpened. But I've never done that with my um, scissors. But you can try that tip. I can't even say it anymore. 
cannot even say it anymore. Um, okay, it does make my teeth hurt. That's so funny. It makes my teeth hurt. All right, let me go back down here. I can't do it. Willa's like, my, her reaction is the same for cotton ball. I can't. All right. That's all of our questions we're going to answer today. What I'm going to do. <laughs> Bugs right. She loses hers before they need to be sharpened. I do that too. What I'm going to do is end this show, which we went an hour today. We normally go 30 minutes. And then we're going to start the after show. I'm going to need a couple seconds in between because i got to shift our... Our stuff's in the hallway that I need to show y'all. It's a lot of stuff. Y'all, like, Oh, and I got good news. If you missed out on the online event, we have squeaked out, and I mean squeaked out, a few more class spots. And when I tell you we squeaked it out, I'm talking there's less than, is there less than 25 spots available total? Alice Irvin wants to know about and a glue gun those. before you go away. Okay, Alice, tell me what you want to know about glue gun. What do we recommend? Oh. Well, I have a new glue gun that I'm really liking, that little guy right there. We have a new glue gun in the store. I don't have it right here at me, but we have a new one in the store that I'm really liking. Um, and I seem to like the Sherbon brand. There was a while I did not like their brand, but that's because I got one um, glue gun that kept leaking on me and I didn't like it. But since then, I've been using this one we got in store, and it's like a um, cordless that sits in a little holder. I really like it, and <laughs> you'll think I'm crazy, but I'm also a big fan of those little tiny ones, like the little cheapy ones, because I like to have a lot of them. Now, I know there are some expensive ones out there, and if I use a glue gun a lot, I might invest in like, I think there's one by Milwaukee that's really expensive and real nice, but I don't really use them. But I like that little one we've got in the store right now. I also like the little... Um, skillet have you seen the little skillet we carry i really like it where you put the little pellets in and then you dip the stuff if you're doing like home decor but if you're doing for paper and stuff oh goodness okay i'm gonna go questions are coming in but some of those we answered earlier so i'm gonna go we're gonna go to the after show and if you have some questions you just are dying for me to know i'll answer some there but here's what i would suggest Tamitha watches our comments, right? If you, if this sparked more questions for you, I'd love to do one of these like once a month because I think it's really educational. So if you would put questions in the comments, we'll dig from those to do these and we'll give you all kinds of information. All right, I'm going to end this stream and we will see you guys in the after show in about three or five minutes. Bye, Bye. now.